have you ever seen a flying saucer, a ghost, and or Bigfoot? Ooh, Bigfoot, huh? Um, well, I'm in Utah and go up in the mountains a lot. And it always feels like Bigfoot's just disappearing behind the trees. And um, I squint because I'm nearsighted. So everything looks like Bigfoot. I see Bigfoot all the time. <laughs> like, ah, that must have been Bigfoot. Um, a flying saucer. I've never seen a flying saucer. I don't think I've seen a UFO of any kind that made me like, whoa, that's definitely um something eerie in the sky that I can't identify but I have plenty of ghost stories even though I don't believe in ghosts the way that they're presented but I yeah I have good ghost stories I have lots of good ghost stories do you want to well, am yeah, I teasing you would you like a good ghost story okay, my so, mouth is watering don't tease me yes <laughs> so um so well, first of all, I have to ask, have you read Ghostland by Colin something? Ghostland. Colin Dickey, maybe is his name? I haven't, but I can Okay. Add highly, highly recommend it because it's basically a, a nonfiction about American ghost culture, kind of. Um, he goes around to the most haunted places in America and kind of researches them and then presents his thoughts on them, which sounds, I guess that sounds kind of like pretentious but it's so good and if you like ghosts and ghost culture you should read it um he 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 talks about like things like why why are ghosts almost always white even in places even like in the south where you would think angry people who died who are coming back after a hard life you would think maybe they wouldn't be white but they're like almost always white and why are ghosts always looking kind of like victorian um anyway so he just like he he um asks questions like that that i i find like fascinating so highly recommend that for you it's an adult novel an adult or adult not novel it's an adult nonfiction. but my ghost story here's my ghost story um my my best ghost story so um when i was a senior in high school i was a drama geek i was super into theater that whole thing um i like lived and breathed it every single day all day and because of that, um, me and a couple of my friends were tapped by this local contractor to put together a haunted house, like a Halloween haunted house spectacle, whatever, um, in the local historic hospital that had not been a hospital for a very long time. It was this abandoned hospital that everyone knew was haunted. I mean, it was just, it was on main or on state street in the town where I grew up and it just was creepy and boarded up. He had bought it to restore it. Um, and before he got on with the restoration, he thought it would be a really fun project to make it into like a haunted house for Halloween, especially because there were so many people in town who had been dying to like walk through this building. I mean, there was just so many good stories of, creepy things happening there. Um, and so we did that. We turned it into a, a haunted house and um, we uh, we did some terrible things like hiding some brick walls that were falling down when OSHA came by to inspect it. That uh, Like it probably should not have been opened for uh, a haunted house spectacle. We probably should not have had people walking through that. But um, the job that I took on was to do the historical research. I wanted to know everything about this hospital and not only had it, it had originally been built as a hospital sometime in the 1860s or 1870s um, and functioned as a hospital until the 1940s or 50s and then it was a bank a church um, a music uh, studio um, lots of different things before it was ultimately like condemned and closed in the 80s um, lots of the things that I found the research that I found um, were about transients that had been living there, like houseless people um, who had like slept there and lived there. And um, I got to, like, I read some of the police reports that they had given uh, when they were unfairly rounded up and arrested for sleeping there because like, well, it's gross to arrest people for sleeping somewhere where they, people need to sleep cut out. Uh oh. Oh, there it is again. Oh, that okay. That was weird. Um, anyway, but like lots of them had stories of seeing figures, hearing voices, hearing little girls. Um, so that was fun to read those police reports. And of course, there were lots of 
births and deaths. Um, there was a, uh, there was a particular legend of a, a deranged doctor hanging a nurse by the flagpole outside. But the coolest thing about this place was there was the crematorium was still downstairs in the basement. Um, which was super creepy. And we included it in part of our thing. We, you had to exit through the basement. So, you know, if you went through this haunted house, haunted hospital, it ended with you having to go through this basement, um, past the crematorium where my wildest friend volunteered to be inside the crematorium and pop out. I couldn't, I, I like had a hard time even being in the room with the crematorium. It was so creepy, but, um, but, uh, about a month before, the hospital, the haunted hospital opened for Halloween, we decided to have to drum up some like press and have the local ghost hunters come into the house in, or into the hospital rather and um, sort of do their thing. And so they brought tape recorders and they came in and, um, and, uh, you know, walked through the house and asked questions and listened. And um, the ghosts said they didn't like me in particular, which was creepy I don't believe a single lick of it. I don't at all, but that was their interpretation. And I was 17 and that was terrifying to hear that the ghosts here did not like me. Like, oh, um, because I was always trying to tidy things up. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to keep things too clean and they didn't like it. Um, it but there was- sharing if they said the ghosts love you, they want to follow you home? I don't know. It was so, yeah, it was it was just weird. Um, oh, and then- yeah, it cut out for a second, but I can hear you now. Um, oh, it's telling me my internet connection is unstable. Whatever that means. Okay, I think we're okay. So they had us, the ghost hunters had us each go into this back room, which was where the morgue was, uh, one by one and sort of stand there and just see what happened. And it was during the day, um, so when it was my turn, I went in there and I still don't know exactly how to explain what I saw, but I saw all of the dust, like the sunlight was coming through this window into the corner of this room. We had all of this black plastic, almost like trash bag material hanging from all the walls to make it really dark. And um, I just saw, I like looked in the corner and saw all of the sunlight and like the dust motes, like circulating and forming around like a figure you know like when the where the yeah like like when the the sunlight and the dust stops on an edge of like a physical thing and I I, I just like saw something in the corner and immediately looked down and backed out of the room before I saw anything else I was like if I keep looking this is going to make it so I never ever sleep again I swear um so that's that's my ghost story. It's not, it's not the best ghost story, but it, um, I felt like after working at the haunted hospital, I felt like something followed me home. Um, cause I had a really hard time feeling alone in my room after that. I don't know how to extend. Um, anyway, that was, that was a, a very creepy three months of my life where it felt like ghosts were constantly and talk of ghosts and talk of haunting just, just um an everyday thing so you had that and you you mentioned you have some other ghost stories uh that we're, we're not we're not going to dive into now yeah so all that but you don't believe in ghosts after that i don't know what i believe i don't believe in ghosts as like a Victorian woman walking up and down the stairs in the house where she lived type <laughs> of thing i think if there's if there's ghosts if there's some sort of overlap between whatever happens after we die, energy, whatever. Cool. And I, I like ghost stories. I love ghost stories. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I believe in corporeal ghosts because I'm not afraid of them anymore. I was in high school and I just am not afraid of them anymore. Now I can enjoy ghost stories because I, I don't worry that like, a ghost is going to come sit on the edge of my bed. Well, <laughs> that, <laughs> that remains to be seen. No, remain. I know. We'll see. I'll let you know what happens. Uh, maybe I'll have a special visitor tonight. Um, but I, I believe in ghost stories. I love them. I love them so much. 
And like, I'm not, I don't discount anything. Flying saucers, Bigfoot, ghosts, stranger things have happened. And man, we just don't know everything. So I will not be surprised at all if ghosts are real or if we tag Bigfoot someday or if we, a flying saucer lands on my head. Like I, nothing will surprise me because the world is strange and anything is possible. You're the author of the Bigfoot Files, and as of this recording, you have not seen Bigfoot that you know of. Not that I know of, but there's definitely been times where the mountains, the the woods kind of go quiet, and you think, oh, the birds kind of stopped chirping. (laughs) Maybe. I saw an interview with a squatcher, and he had the best uh, take on on going squatching. Uh, Yeah. that's the correct for, for going to that is for Bigfoot. Definitely. Uh, he said, well, I, I hope we find them. But even if we don't, I'm out here. I'm having beer with my buddies and we're camping. Yep. And it's a great time. But exactly. Yes, good for you, sir. That's exactly it. It's a whole, it, and that's just it. It's, it's harmless fun. And it's, it all centers around stories. And um, I just think nothing's better 